Welcome to another great episode of Head Kicks and Hey Makers, everybody. Um, welcome, uh, fight fans. I am uh, your boy, Bodkins. Uh, Will will be joining us uh, just shortly. He's uh, running behind. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we wanted to go ahead and start getting started. Shout out to my guy, Tanner, uh, hooking up uh, the uh, layouts and the new intro. We look a little bit more official tonight. Uh, Witt will be joining us shortly. It is our UFC 302 post show. Uh, so we will talk all about uh, UFC 302. Um, and then also um, at the, uh, we'll also talk about uh, 303. We'll break down this week's Louisville card at UFC in Louisville uh, this weekend. Headlined by none other than Jared Candonier versus uh, Nasser Dean Imanov. Uh, Candonier's been out for a while, uh, coming back. I believe he had like a partial torn ACL, so he's out. Uh, if you remember, like Candonier's really right up there as far as like the who's who uh, in the middleweight division. Uh, I mean, he has a win over Sean Strickland, the uh, former champ. Uh, has not fought DDP, lost to Izzy. So if you're looking at like those top guys, um, he has faced them all, uh, lost to Robert Whitaker. Um, we know uh, Whitaker will fight here um, in a few, two weeks time or so, in a few weeks time uh, against uh, Hamzat Chemaev. So like that, this whole middleweight, a uh, lot to be jockeying uh, in that middleweight division. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, um, you know, a lot to get into tonight, UFC, uh, three, but we'll start with, uh, I don't know whether we should start with UFC 303 or 302. Let's go ahead and we'll start with, uh, before we, uh, um, we'll bring in, uh, Wit is here. So we'll bring in Wit. um, Wit, what is up my guy? Uh, all dressed in black. Um, it's a funeral today, right? <laughs> we will get into the funeral as well, but with like the, the MMA community has been a buzz the last two days, uh, two and a half days. Uh, it seems they're all week really since Monday when we woke up and realized that this Conor McGregor presser that we were going to supposed to have in Ireland is canceled and the internet's going to internet with, um, and the UFC did not do any, to me, didn't do any favors by coming out saying anything. Uh, then it was reported that ESPN took down like the uh, pre-buy of 303. You couldn't buy it off, off ESPN. Yeah. Uh, they were taking down Conor McGregor fights off of their YouTubes, their socials. So it was like, man, it, what's going on here? Uh, Ariel Hawani reports on Monday like, hey, it's not anything drug-related, alcohol-related, party-related. Then people are thinking... Oh shit, Connor's hurt. Uh, poor Mike Chandler. Uh, but then you know, and the internet's still cooking because the internet's good, going to internet. But it looks like what Ariel Hawani reported today uh, on the MMA Hour is that everything is going to be okay. A lot of optimism. The the UFC did what they were supposed to. They reached out and seen like, hey, can we fi fix this card if Connor can't go? Um, you know, was reaching out to different people, maybe, you know, a BMF fight, maybe this fight, uh, you know, what can we do? Because this card, if you take away Connor and Chandler, there's not a whole lot left on this card. Uh, I mean, there's some intriguing fights, but not a fight you want to, not a card you want to pay $80 to on pay-per-view for, uh, but none. And mind the less, all the people that paid thousands of dollars to buy tickets, you know, for the gate, uh, you know, they would probably, they would. It's in their bylines. If they change the, if the they change the main event, uh, they have to refund the money. So obviously right. they don't want to do that because that's a shit ton of money. Not that they can't afford it, but nonetheless, looks like everything is a go uh, right now uh, for Connor versus Chandler at UFC 303. BJ, I'm on the show. Hi, what's up, brother? Wow. He, he wants to check in on the Connor card. He's, you know, yeah, I know. He wants shout out to shout out to BJ, everybody. He's asking me the 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 on the on the what? Your, your mom's your mom's got it. She I'll go back there. She she'll fix it for you, buddy. Okay, so wild, wild, wild situation, bro. Um, I woke up uh expecting to possibly look at a, a fight presser. Excited about it. I know me and you talked about it. And all of a sudden, everywhere there was Connor slander. Um, like you mentioned, the internet's going to internet. And somehow, some way, man, it 
it it really it it took the air out of the balloon. You know what I mean? Like, ah, not again, or or oh, what could happen now? When uh, I read something that one of the guys I follow on TikTok and uh, Twitter put in there, he, he basically was saying that the contract obligations or the obligations that you know ESPN and other uh, social media internet websites may have had towards the event once deals are broken that's why everything got stripped that's why we don't we didn't get to see some of the Chandler and Connor stuff I saw a little bit of it um of course but you know it it was immediately retracted like maybe for like an hour or two when it was about to happen and then there was no more um as we sit here and we talk about it and once again, everybody watching, as you can see, Bakins and I are both in black. This is this is this is funeral attire. This is also almost like the death of the idea of the main event with Conor McGregor happening again. Um, you know, Dana White is a businessman first and a genius probably second. He is, and when I say that, I say that to say this because somewhere in his relationship with Conor. Somewhere in his relationship with Michael Chandler, he has to make a business decision. And if something happened with either Connor or Chandler, whether it be physical, financial, maybe even mental, you know what I'm saying, whatever, he has to probably make the better decision. And 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 the 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 bait has been on the hook for this fight for what a year and a half, maybe. You know, yeah. Uh, the 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 Ultimate Fighter series was last year. When we got, we're already you know, in episode one of the new tough, and right. this fight hasn't happened. And I, and I didn't, I, and I have to go back and watch that. I missed it yesterday, but but we, as as fight fans, were hyped for this for a very long time, and I can only imagine what type of money is at stake. And when someone like a businessman like Dana White says the the bottom line and the numbers are going down, I'm sure he's kind of hot about it, bro. I'm sure, he's kind of hot. Yeah, I think uh, everything is going to be okay. Uh, you know, it, they didn't do themselves any favors by not reporting on it. You know, and Ariel made a, a point, though, too. It's like if they don't put this presser out that they're supposed to have this big presser on Monday, we don't ever fucking know anything, right? Like things happen, uh, you know, in camps all the time, uh, right? Like, you know, we, we learned that uh, Islam had staff after the fight. Uh, you know, there's, you know, person got hurt in camp this person did this you know how many times do we learn that shit happened in camp all the time remember like o'malley said he hurt his ribs going into uh the fight with aljo you know couldn't you know couldn't wrestle the last two weeks so we you know injuries happen in camps all the time if they don't have this presser and lined up we probably never learn about this and it's probably never a big stink about any you know much to do about anything but because they had this big presser uh, and the presser was sold out in, in Dublin. Yeah. Uh, that that alerted everybody as far as like, oh shit, there's something here. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, but um, it seems like to be that the fire has been put out, and uh, you know we are going to get the return of, of of Connor and and really Mike return of Mike Chandler too, because Mike Chandler hasn't fought in a year or uh, in some change too. Um, yeah. And, definitely. And, and, and Chandler's never, or not Chandler, but McGregor, for all the all senses purposes, uh, you know, he's never really, once he signed on a dotted line to fight on a date, he's never pulled out. So there's that. I mean, look, when, just like you, you mentioned earlier, when you look at what is available for the fight itself, what's going on, who else is on the card, um, what's on the undercard, I mean, you know, sometimes there is a fight that you could say, okay, um, the main card, the, the, the main event is is out. We're going to move you guys up and put somebody else but You in. can't do that on this card. No, you can't. There's um, not a title on this card. There's not a, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a, it's a typical, it's like a, this is the best version of a boxing card the UFC can do is you got Connor headlining versus, you know, so-and-so. And then we're just going to fill in the rest with some some intriguing names and matchups. Definitely. Um, when when I look at it, you know, unfortunately, we not we're gonna we we're not we're gonna see the second coming of Jamal Hill as we saw him lost to Alex Pereira. Um, and somehow, some way, is that an intriguing fight that you could make a main event? Maybe not. Uh, you know, Carlos Ulbricht, great fighter, 
11 and one right now. Somebody that's that we not a main event with. on a pay per view. That's a main yeah. event on a fight night. You know what yes, I mean? That, that's what I was going to get to. That, that is that a main event fight? That's maybe not. Maybe that, not. that's a main event like like this weekend. Uh, you know, we're getting the Cannoneer versus uh, Imana. If you're okay with that on a fight night, you ain't paying eighty dollars to watch uh, on a pay per view to watch. You know, a non title fight that doesn't consider you know. Uh, you know Conor McGregor on it, or you know, right. what I mean? you know, the, and and then as we we can continue going down the list, you know, it's it's exciting to possibly see uh one of Michael Venom Page's most toughest opponents. Yeah, as, MVP. As really, late. it's a tough matchup for Ian Gary too. Like, you know, both both matchups at at, at three oh three. Right. You know? So I mean, it's it's somewhere in some way, shape, or form. This was top heavy, really, really top heavy. You, me, everybody else. We would sit through two and a half hours of BS just to catch, you know, 25 minutes worth of Conor McGregor and uh, Michael Chandler, you know, and, and and rightfully so, you know, rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, I, well, and we'll, we'll, it looks like that fight's going to happen now, but uh, let's rewind up. What's, what's up, Sam? Uh, let's rewind a little bit uh, to last Saturday. And none other than, do you want to start with, uh, should we go in chronicle order of the day? Let's start with the, we'll start with the boxing on Saturday. Um, Deontay Wilder, it's, is Mama Wilder told him to hang it up after this. And I think he's got to listen to Mama Wilder with. Oh man. Um, I, I can, I can honestly say that we have to, we gotta, we gotta do, we gotta do this the right way, bro. We gotta do this the right way. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something special, real quick. Uh, let's see, can I? Are it, you gonna say some kind words? We might, we, might break, we, we might break YouTube for just a second, but hold on. Let's, Reverend Wit here is gonna say some kind words uh, about the. Um, anyway, it, it was, it was really, it was really, it was really something that grabbed. It was a polarizing figure. We, as the American people, and I'm not just talking about black people, I'm talking about white people, boxing fans, we saw Deontay Wilder grow in that ring. And somewhere in his growth, one of the one, one of the one things that made me as a fight fan upset as I watch boxing quite often is I didn't see the addition of the skills that happened. You know, you go, okay, well, he can fight. Where's the jab at? Where's his where's his movement? Uh, where's his lateral? Where's movement? the legs at? Where's the yeah? We you know he's he got a gas tank. We know he's got a gas tank. We've seen him go to the championship rounds on numerous occasions. You know when he when he switched trainers and he got with Malik. I think it's Malik Scott. Shout out to Malik Scott. I think he's a. I think he's that's a a a, a very good boxer for someone coming up because he has you know mantras. He's got. A mental condition and he's got all kinds of stuff but what wilder needed was someone to train him physically into a style of fighting that was going to propel him forward as he kept going up the ranks as he was knocking guys out this, that, now let's keep it real 10 title defenses is a lot okay 10 title defenses is a lot but when you started to get to the point where you were going to have to fight anthony joshua you're going to have to fight tyson fury you know those other there were other guys who were coming up the ranks that would have possibly have the that possibly had the same type of fighting style like Anthony Joshua who can move and box, uh, like a Tyson Fury who's a huge man who can move and box. We we didn't see that. We saw him rely heavily on putting his left hand in people's faces and somehow bringing that right to connect. And, and it hurt me, bro. It hurt me. I don't know what. I, I I don't know if and, and if you watch the fight, I don't know what happened. I think he I think got he hit. Got his he got right. hit. Looked at the ref. It's like, what the fuck did that guy just hit me with? And then got knocked out. That's what happened with it. It the the glove grazed his nose, and he turned around. Was like this, like what? And the, and then bam. It was bang, almost bang. like it, it. It was almost like he got hit. Like thought it was like an illegal blow or something. Was like he ain't supposed to hit me that hard. You know what I mean? I, like I, no. I, it, and the thing is, they they played it back. He didn't get hit. It grazed his nose. I think he broke his nose. 
I, even just hitting the t- you know if you if you've ever been to a fight, you hit your nose hard enough that you don't even got to hit it hard. It hurts. It's like when you it's like when you and your brother are, are fighting and he just like when you get hit in the nose and your eyes start watering. Yes, and you're like, yes. please don't hit me again. Like, hey, that's it. Like that's he was trying yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, whoa. yeah. He was yeah. like, whoa, wait, and and yeah. he turned around. The difference is he wasn't fighting his brother. He was fighting some big Asian motherfucker who was Listen. willing to knock his ass out. Bang does not speak any English or very male <laughs> English. Okay, so he missed all of that part and he just continue to connect with the fight in boxing when you step into the ring one of the first rules that the referee tells you is protect yourself at all times where did that go what happened what happened like he i, I saw it I, I replayed it he he got he didn't get hit hard if anything but he turned around and the, the crowd's right here he's like come on bam Connection from Zhang, and and I never seen him get knocked out like that. And his mom, God bless his mother. His mother and father are Mama, That's why. That's why we had Ma- the, uh, the the church music in there. Mama um, Wilder said, "Hey, it's time to time to time to hang it up." He proved his point, ladies and gentlemen. Ten years we have been watching Deontay Wilder bring us moments uh, to the fight game that we we couldn't replicate at the time. You know, we had Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather put on a spectacle, but we had uh, Deontay Wilder really knocking cats out. You know, yeah, I, I, I said, unfortunately for boxing, and it, it seems like when you, when you finally reach the pinnacle to where you're a household name, that's almost like at the tail end of your career more than the beginning or the middle of your career. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's and it took really, those fury fights for him to really get known, you know, to become a household name. I mean, you got you got the you got to think about it when, you know, you got Helena's Tyson Fury, um, Joseph Parker, who uh, who also lost on that card. You know, th- there was okay. Let's think about it. All right, so Helena's Tyson Fury twice. Luis Ortiz, who Ortiz, he fought twice as well. He beat um, be, uh, Ortiz beat uh, uh, Anthony Joshua, if you remember. Anthony, yeah, Ortiz beat Anthony Joshua. Um, Tyson Fury, Bermain Stavern, Gerald Washington, Chris Ariola. Like he was not, he was not fighting the the smallest guys. He was taking out cats left and yeah. right. And and I'm saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up, ten Rob? title defenses, and one time when, of course, he when he first won the WBC heavyweight belt from Bermain Stavern, like that that still is big news, a big deal for a heavyweight champion. He he, I think he he proved his point though. He he could do something. He's a boxer. He's one of yeah. the great. He's one of the greats. You know, is he Lennox Lewis? Maybe not. Uh, is he Mike Tyson? Maybe not, but in his prime, he was one of the most feared fighters on the planet, and we have to give respect to Deontay Wilder when we say his name. And we put him to rest today on the show as he lays his gloves down, because when mama say it's over. It's, it's over. over. It's over. It's over. Uh, yeah, you're you're exactly right. With uh, I, I'm with you. Uh, it, it's time. Uh, we knew that if he didn't win, uh, you know. So, real quick, uh, we started the show talking about UFC 303. I can't. Conor McGregor posted a picture on his IG, and he's it. You can tell he's in a doctor's um, a doctor's uh, office, but he's got a big old smile on his face, and he's got the the emoji with the. Um, the, the thumbs strong up, arms, the strong arm, arm. Yeah. So, so it looks like it looks like all's good to go uh, for none other than Mister Notorious uh, Conor McGregor. So maybe he got good news. It looks like good news to go um, for for Conor. Uh, yeah, and you know we have to remember he's, he's got the best doctors in the world. Probably looking at him, you know what I'm saying? But it's yeah, well, McGregor. I said. Uh, I, I said this. Uh, is, <laughs> so Ronald says uh, Connor got topped off by the nurse. That's why he smiled. Hey, maybe he is. Uh, I said this. Your body, if he did get hurt, your body can't go from cocaine and steroids 
uh, you know, somewhat clean living in a fight camp and not break down. You know what I mean? So we got to remember that. Uh, but nonetheless, I do think we're going to get Connor versus Chandler. Let's get into 302, though, with uh, the card as a whole was kind of a snooze fest. I, I thought for the most part uh, up until the main event, but uh, nice couple nice wins here. Uh, I'm going to pull up the card here. Uh, for me, I thought Randy Brown had a huge win, and it's time for him to uh, to maybe enter the UFC. I don't know if he got ranked or should be ranked. Uh, let me look at the welterweight class here. Uh, welterweight. So Randy Brown didn't get ranked quite yet, but he's on the cusp of, of being ranked. And really, I would like to fight. I would like to see uh, Randy Brown go ahead and fight a guy who won on this card, and that's Kevin Holland. Uh, in 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 real life, bro, you make a lot of sense with that one. Um, we, as a, as a show, as fight fans, we love Kev, Kevin Holland, and to see Randy Gregory, you know, a uh, rude boy, you know, out here do his thing. I mean, I, I'm I'm with I'm with testing the fighters with something worth it. You know what I mean? Like Bobby, you just got to give me some credit. So I want some royalties for that band, that band. <laughs> <See you. laughs> but uh, seriously, you know, with, with what we saw that night, you know, he, he put on a show, he went out there, he didn't, out, he, I mean, Randy Brown, he didn't get, you know, beat when it comes time for us to actually say like what happened. I think this was a, a good one, a good showing for him to be on undercards going forward and, yeah. and, and and rising up the ranks, most definitely. Yeah, and like I said, Kevin Holland's 15 in welterweights. Uh, Kevin Holland, nice uh, nice win. He gets knocked down and then breaks the dude's arm. Uh, they and, was asking for it. I don't know. Yeah. If you if um, we saw you was watching it, I was watching it. In my mind, I was like, bro, if you, please, please stop him. Please. Please. <laughs> yeah, Tad, he didn't, and then he broke his arm. Now Olachek says his arm's not broken, and he's mad at Herb Dean for stopping the fight. Yeah, uh, let me tell you something, brother. Okay, your elbow only goes that way for just a short amount of time. Okay, so if it's not broken, he pulled it out of socket at least. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just that's just being honest about it. So, but yeah, big shouts out to Kevin Holland. It it truly and honestly looked like. It was not going to go well for him or if, if that fight would have continued. But Kevin Holland having the uh, fight prowess, the awareness to realize, hey, he's going a little too trigger happy right now. Let me grab something. And this shows you this shows you the development of Kevin Holland, because what, two years ago, you know, when we when we saw the, the Wonder Boy fight and when he was when we were doing watching uh, Kevin Holland and. In the apex, when uh, you know uh, COVID was happening, that Kevin Holland wouldn't have thought of that at that time. You know, so shout out to kudos to him and his team and his camps for developing him well to make him aware to to, to think that way now. Yeah, I, I said this on Sunday's show. Uh, I, I always, I'm a big Kevin Holland fan. I love Big Mouth. Uh, I think he's just a fun fighter, but it's, he's a guy that you never, you, you don't think will ever win the title. Like he's not a title guy, but he always be kind of a gatekeeper. He even alluded to that. Uh, was like, Hey, I, I'll be, I'll continue to be the gatekeeper in the middleweight and the welterweight. If you want me to, uh, he's a guy that they can always call on to be on cards. Cause he, he loves fighting and he's a fun fighter. He's a, you know, and that's the thing. He's never in a boring fight. I'll give Kevin Holland that, um, I think his most boring fight was, uh, uh, Brunson and Brunson just laid on top of him, and even then, that was kind of entertaining because Kevin Holland just still kept talking shit, even though Brunson was laying on top of him. So, right, uh, <laughs> that was that was a memory right there. And and kudos as I, as I'm looking at the uh, UFC 302 card on uh, UFC.com backslash events, I see uh, he's splitting performance the performance of the night. Yeah, uh, yeah, with, 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 with Islam and DP. So yeah. Um, he did get that, did get performance of the night. Uh, let's get to the co-main event, and that was uh, Sean Strickland did what Sean Strickland want, does. That, that that was you. You picked that wit. Uh, it, that fight pretty much went th- – pretty much – it was – I mean, it was kind of a boring fight. Even Sean 
I love how Sean always hypes up these fights. We're going to go to war. We're going to go to war. Somebody's going to die in this ring. And then he puts on some of the most boring ass fights you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, but he gets the W's. I mean, it's Sean Strickland is a decision fighter by the definition. Uh, he doesn't finish a whole lot of people ever, uh, but gets the gets the the decision win. I, I really it was it was five. I don't know why it was five rounds. It was five zero. Sean, uh, in my mind, some some ref. I don't know if he just mistakenly thought that Pablo Costa was Sean Strickland because he had it <laughs> the, the wrong way. Fifty. I don't know if it was Stevie Wonder. Or maybe he was wearing the sunglasses that you're wearing with. Uh, but uh, there's no way Pablo Costa should have ever uh, had that. Uh, Somebody should have scored that uh, that fight for Paulo Costa. Listen, bro, I I am with you on that one. I don't know what they were watching. I don't know how the fights happened. When I look at things that matter, like significant strikes, one hundred and eighty two to one fifty eight. That's a little bit of disparity. Um, you know, to me, although although slightly boring, Sean Strickland is like the he's Jason Floyd Boyden. Mayweather in the MMA ring. Like yeah. just a defensive guy that Philly shell, that Philly shell. Like Floyd's never been in no bangers. You know what I mean? Like it's no, just he, yeah. He, you appreciate he's got, it. He's, and he's 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 uh like I said in scary movies. He's like a, a Jason Voorhees. He's walking to you. He's not really bagging up. And, he's gonna and, put and, you on your back foot. Right. And he's gonna just, put you on your back foot, and you're gonna and you're gonna you to death. Out. Yeah, yeah you're gonna was, figure out whether you want to get hit in the face by that jab after a while. And and yeah. I can, I'll say this: I think Paulo Costa had a good fight plan, but when you let it go full fledged and go, hey, all we're gonna do is kick at his legs, or when you when you started getting them checked, them, them kicks checked, it, it changed your mind a little, changed his mind a little great bit. Great, Rob. Uh, and and yeah, yeah, stri- think great analysis, Rob. Uh, Strickland is boring as yeah, de- most definitely. But he is he's a good fighter, but it's he's not a, a fun he's guy to watch. Good. You know yeah. what I mean? He's he's a good fighter, but he's not a he's not a fun fighter. Um, and, and I'll say this: like to beat Strickland, you got to do what DDP did and just meet him in the center. Don't let him back you up. You know what I mean? You got to just hey, we're gonna stand in the center. We're just gonna bang. Or, or or not, you know what I mean? Like you're not gonna back me down. Even it, he backed down Izzy. Like you know, uh, Strickland gets the win. He says he's gonna sit around and wait for a title shot. I don't know if I really believe him, and I don't know if beating Paulo Costa, who at that time is like ranked seven, if that earns you a title shot. Uh, what's yeah. your thoughts on on that, Wit? I mean, I'm I'm on a, I'm on the same page as you, bro. When I think about what a uh, title shot where a title shot would land you or or rather what fight would land you in title contention um i don't think it's paulo costa bro i'm just gonna be, i'm just gonna be just gonna be honest not to say paulo costa is not a, a fighter in which you could use as a stepping stone towards a championship fight but nah man you got to get better than that we got to see something different we got we got guys who are chomping at the bit to fight right now Jerry Cannonier is one of them. Robert Whitaker is one of them. Um, if Whitaker, well, it, is he? So it looks like we're going to get Izzy versus DDP next. Yes. To me, if Whit beats uh, Hamzat, I, I give it Whit over Strickland. And Jerry Cannonier has a win over Strickland. Yes. Uh, so, so you know what I mean? Like he has a more of a, a gripe over over Strickland. Like give it to Jared. If Jared wins this weekend. You know, I would, I would, I would give him confidence, and maybe he gets the if DDP loses, maybe do Jared and DDP uh, in in the title the title fight. If Izzy beats, if Izzy wins, uh, Izzy, if if Sean Strickland has got to hope that Izzy wins, then he can say, "Hey, I'm next," because he's already beat Wit twice. He hasn't beaten me, so that would uh, that's the hope there. And if I'm Jared Candonier. Uh, I'm hoping that DDP wins, and then I'm ne- I'm probably next because I have I have a win over Strickland, even though uh, you know he already beat Robert Whitaker. So maybe Jared Cannonier, if he wins this weekend, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit, is you know should uh, should do next. I'm I'm also with you on that one. This kind of, this weekend with the fight night uh, competition on the coming up for Jared Cannonier. This is kind of be a litmus test to see if he's all the way back from and recovered 
Um, and then, you know, at the, at the, at the time of his injury, uh, Cannonier was right up there for title contention. If not in front of Bobby Whitaker because of, you know, their already have happened stance fight, of course, somewhere above strong Strickland because of what they did. So it's like, it would have maybe put Cannonier at, at two or three at the, at the lowest, but right now sitting at four, we have to see what happens because right now at middleweight, the three, the next three big middleweight fights being both involving Robert Whitaker, the other involving Izzy and uh, DDP. I mean, and and Jared Cannonier this weekend. We're going to kind of somebody's going to weave themselves out with a loss. Yeah, 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 I mean. yeah. Somebody's going to take right. themselves. And out if Humsat beats, if Humsat beats, uh, you know, if Humsat beats Robert Bobby Knuckles in a couple weeks, like he's got every right to say I'm next for the title. Listen, uh, and and somewhere in there, and the UFC will want to push him because they've been on, they've been trying to strap the rocket ship to him I, since day I, one. I, you see, you took the words out of my mouth. We've been waiting to see Hamza Shemaev return full force from being one of the scariest fighters in you know in our uh, post or during COVID era, um, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, up, um, uh, it's Ramadan up. Oh, I got uh, staff in, uh, you know, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Up, yeah. I spit in the street, and now I'm, like, detained. Whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whatever it was when he was home or when he was, uh, you know, in the Arab United Arab Emirate countries, you know, that got him stuck there, it, it, it all seemed to hinder him being in where we thought he should be as far as uh, the rankings are concerned. But still, having not fought for, what, maybe a year and a half? He's at ten, not so bad. He's he's at he's in a prime spot to say who after these three fights that we just talked about happen. Let me let me add him. You know what I'm saying? Like let yeah. let me get Jared Cannonier. Let me maybe get uh, Robert Whitaker. Well, Dana Dana has come out and he said that this is a main this is a number one uh, contender fight between Bobby Knuckles, but. Uh, again, I think whoever wins that title fight uh, in a couple weeks uh, or at the back end of the year will uh, decide that. Uh, but uh, to answer Rob's question here, what's what's Pablo do now? He's he ha- he hasn't been the same since he lost to Izzy, uh, you know, on Fight Island, and uh, when Izzy humped the shit out of him after he knocked him out, uh, <laughs> he, he, he he keeps saying all this shit on Twitter. I mean, the. Uh, Costa hasn't beat anybody in the UFC. Like currently in the UFC, he is he doesn't have a win against anybody on the roster. Um, you know, but that's a good question. So the person I'd like to see him take on, let's see, Costa is uh, eight. You know, I I you know a good name for him would be um, fellow Bra- Brazilian, either Michelle P- Pajera or. Uh, Kyle uh, Berhilio, uh would yeah. be kind of the people I'm looking at. Two guys that like to kind of stand and bang. Pablo's got to find that dog in him because uh, he doesn't have it. He's too busy making memes on the internet. Uh, great Twitter handle, but uh, you know I don't think um, you know uh, it, that uh, it, he he's going to be a title contender anytime soon, Rob. Yeah, man. Um, you know, shout out to. Uh, Rob and shout out to Scott, uh, for you know the questions in the chat. Uh, I, I'm really somewhere in the same idea of if any up oh, there, there goes my sources. Basically, Paulo Costa is going to be somewhere in that mix of hey, um, you know, we we gave you we gave it to you, they they fed him at least two fights on a platter, you know, yeah. and, and and he could have been top top three if he would have won. Um, the Israel out of Sanya fight took him out of a lot of uh, good spaces, I'm sure, with the matchmakers and, and Dana White. But can he stay in the top ten, or is he just going to fall completely out of it? We'll see. Well, he's that. in the eight. He's eight right now. That's yeah, why I said, eight. you know, Michelle Pajera, K- uh, Kyle Bahario would make perfect sense for him. Yeah. Uh, because like they're up and comers. Hey, defend your spot. Try to be that gatekeeper. Uh, to answer Scott, Scott. Uh, Connor is fighting uh, all as well as what's being reported right now. Uh, if you want more analysts, uh, rewind the tape a little bit. Uh, we talked about it at the top of the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Uncle Scott. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get you a new phone. Uh, set it up, flip phone, so you can look at uh, Connor's Instagram. 
and see that uh, it kind of looks like he's getting a checkup and he's got a thumbs up. So it looks like the fight is still on, although everybody was a little disappointed that we didn't get to see that uh, presser in Dublin. Yeah. Uh, we get to the main event with, uh, man, this fight. Well, can and I play some more, more funeral music? <laughs> we, we might need to. Um, we might need to because, man, going into that fight, that fight was – I thought it was going to be over in the first 30 seconds. Once yeah. once Islam took DP down and had him in that body triangle, I'm like, oh, shit, this fight's about to be over in 30 yeah. seconds here. Yeah. Uh, DP survives, yeah. and then I had it kind of 3-1 Islam going into the fifth. DP's pulling up the shorts as he loves to do. Uh, you know, Islam's bleeding, and you're just thinking, man, maybe DP can get – Islam look tired a little bit. Maybe, uh, but then he tries. He tries to take him down. DP's trying to get up, and then Islam just bolts out of a cannon, and, and uh, you know uh, puts that Dars choke on him, and and really put DP to sleep. And DP kind of come to find out DP's got a broken nose and a partial torn ACL oh. after the, after the fight. Now, to me, I get you know I don't know if that was his last fight. Um, he doesn't know if it was the last fight. It's a lot to ask because now he's got the partial torn ACL. To me, against going up against Islam, as good as he looked, you can still see that DP is one of the top five best lightweights in the world. In the world. But, you know, to him, he's probably looking at it like, does he want to try to make another run at it? And to fourth crack at it, not there's I don't know if another guy a guy gets four cracks at the at a title. Um you know, it would be a fourth different person to him, but I just don't think that. I do think it might be that might be the last ride for uh, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Your thoughts on the main event, Whit? All right, man. Once again, excuse me as I break off into uh, just a moment because I this one hurt me just as much as I'm sure it hurt everybody else. Let's let's do it, man. Straight up. Let's 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 see about it. Hold on. Let's. Uh, man, I, I remember watching Dustin Poirier. Nineteen years man, old. Nineteen years old as a young man, and I was I was like, look at this guy, man. He's got everything. He's got he's got hands. He's got feet. He can move. You know, he can wrestle a little bit. You know. But 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 there's always somebody better than you, but you don't know when they're gonna show you. It it hurt my feelings because it finally looked like he had it laid out, man. He had it laid out, and then all of a sudden it ended. Um, I really just to be real with you, I, I want to say this, and I want to say this: if you didn't watch that fight, this was a this was an exhibition of will and heart. Dustin Poirier stood in there, took some clean shots. Islam stood in there, took some clean shots. I think somewhere in, you know, in the mental psyche of Islam, Makachev, he said, I'm going to beat this son of a gun standing up. I'm going to do it. I'm going to. But Dustin you know, Poirier was too good. He was too good. And you saw, I listen, I saw the frustration on his face when his nose was bleeding. And he said, I got I to gotta end this now. Like, I don't know what you say in 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 Russian, you know. I don't know what you say, but he said, I got to end this now. As soon as he caught that late, you ever seen, you ever been frustrated with like your wife or somebody you are wrestling with and yeah. he just threw his leg and, and, and caught him and, and, and immediately put that darts choke it, and folded him. That it was a, it was a way that you did a darts choke. I've never seen. He had his leg in a triangle, but had his neck around his arms. So it stops you from breathing either way. And bam, all of a sudden he was out. And it wasn't even all of a sudden he was out. He tapped, and then he went down and was out and was like, wait, did, he, did, did it happen? And it did. I think that was Islam's toughest test bar none. Hardest yeah, test. I think I, coming. my takeaways from that fight is, you know, uh, Eddie Alvarez uh, said in an interview, too, he's like, the difference between Khabib and Islam is Islam goes for finishes. Like, you know what I mean? But so he's more acceptable to losses because he opens himself up. Um, and he dug down deep. So, like, they, I was like, that's definitely true. Islam does finish, guys. Like, unlike K Khabib would just wear you out, Islam will go for the finish even the first, second, or third rounds. Yeah. Um, I, I come taking away is, like, Islam's a dude for sure, 
but also he looked beatable. Like, look like you yeah. could, you, you know what I mean? There's, there's points in that fight where you're like, man, but it just wasn't going to be Dustin Poirier. It, uh, the, and the thing is, and the thing is, as you say that, bro, if it's not Dustin Poirier, then who? Like, then who? Well, then? it could be Armin Saruki, and that that's oh, that, that could ah. be that seems to be who's next. Now, Islam called out, uh, said he wanted a shot at the 170 title. Yes. Um, but uh, that was pretty much shot down, and it, and it looks like it's uh, going to be Armin versus Islam next at some point, maybe uh, maybe in November at the MSG card. Uh, it, it, in Islam, they've had one fight too. Islam took they it was a short notice fight and it was a close fight. Right. Uh, Armin has you know improved uh, immensely since then. Yeah. Uh, so you know only time will time will tell. But I kind of I like that matchup, uh, Armin Sarukian versus Islam. I don't like that matchup, man. I'm gonna be real with you because I feel like Armin Sarukian is gonna fall into the trap. You're gonna fall. Yeah, you remember. Uh, Everybody's seen what is that predator two, and uh, you know they're on the train, and and the predator's doing his thing, and he's invisible, and the, and the headset's going, it's a trap, it's a trap, it's a trap, yeah, it's a trap, okay? You gonna think you Saruki is gonna think he can wrestle? He's gonna swear he can wrestle. He's gonna remember the last two times he was wrestling. And then oh, Islam round your neck. The thing that the thing that made Islam look human. Was Dustin Poirier kept him stay, kept him scrambling, did a lot of sprawling, did a lot of get off the ground, and he said, and and Dustin said he he's been practicing getting off the mat for months. And, yeah, and you could tell that that was his that was his thing. Every time that Islam got him close to the cage, got his legs, he's been fighting to stand up for four months strong. If Armin Sarukian does not have the wherewithal to figure out that, hey, if I can keep this standing for as long as possible, that's in my favor. I think Armin Sarukian is a great competitor. I think that he'll try to wrestle Islam, and therein lies the trap, period. Yeah, and, and to wrap up, Dustin Portier, before we look at this real quick, uh, this week's card before we get out of here. I mean, if that was the last ride that Dustin Diamond is poor, Dustin uh, Diamond Portier He's a UFC Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever lace him up. Um, you know, he might be the best fighter in, in the world that had never won a, a legit, you know, title. It, you know what I mean? Like he was an interim title, but uh, not the, you, you know, a unified title. Uh, it, he might be the best to ever do, do it. And such a great guy. I mean, you know what I yeah, mean? Like that's, exactly. that's what he gives back to his community, uh, the type of person he is. Hey, tip the cap to to you, Diamond. Uh, a, a hell of a career if that was it. So, and before we go, bro, before we go on, let's let's just look let's just look at some of these names of the people that he's fought that are like already slated to probably be, you know, uh, Hall of Famers. Or you know, Hall of who's who? You know, the who's who? Eddie Alvarez. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Eddie Good Alvarez, time. Max Holloway, uh, Max Holloway, Dan Hooker. Uh, you know what we got? Michael Chandler, Conor, of course. Conor uh, McGregor, three times. You know, then we go, we go further down, and we look at you know Pablo Garza, Max. Once again, Max Holloway again. Cub Swanson, I remember that fight, even though he lost it. That was a great fight. Eric Koch, like there's a list of people who he has fought more than once, some several times, and they the you can't you can't have a better resume. Is what I like to say. You can't have a better resume in that division, you know. Interim champ, BMF title winner. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, let's kudos to him if he puts the gloves down. You know, I I think me and you had a conversation about it before. When you start talking about your kids in post fight conversations, that's it. That's it. And I love yeah. it though. I love it though. I got kids now. You know what I'm saying? Same thing for for Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder was like. You know, I fought for my daughter. I've been fighting for my daughter, blah, blah, blah. Go live with her now, bro. You got millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, we get into uh, – let's look at the uh, this week's uh, card. Again, we talked about it already. Uh, Jared Cadenier, uh, who is trying to get into the title picture. He's the number four ranked middleweight. He's coming off the long injury, uh, the long layoff. Let me, I'm trying to think the last time we saw Jared uh, – 
he beat the mess out of Marvin Vittori. That yeah, was Vittori. almost yeah, a year ago. Down. Uh, almost a year ago. Almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, June, June 17th. 17th. Uh, and he's taking on, uh, you know, I- Iman, uh, uh, Iman. Nasruddin Imanov, who's ranked number seven. So Imanov's trying to, in, you know, enter himself into the title prediction. Uh, Imanov is, uh, you know, he lost to Sean Strickland, had a no contest against Chris Curtis, did beat Roman Dolides, uh in February, back in February. So, uh, you, but uh, nonetheless, uh you know who do you like? Who do you like winning this one with? To be honest with you, man, this is a toss up for me because I was I I think me and you might have watched it or we're talking about it. I don't think we did. We're doing head kicks and haymakers at the time. But I think we might have talked about um, Jared Cannonier and uh, what's my guy that he beat up? Uh, Vittori, yeah, yeah, Vittori, right? Because Vittori was coming up in the rankings. Vittori was looking scary. I remember he had a couple good fights. And then out of nowhere, you know, Jerry Cannonier treats him like a rag doll, gets him out, and it was and it was crazy to see. I am in the in the mindset that you have to test yourself in several different ways in order to prove that you are who you are. This will be Jerry Cannonier's test. Can he come back from injury? Does he still have the same focus? Will he fight? Uh, you know, un unwavered by his past injuries because you know like just like any sport basketball football you know you got the acl tear you scared to plant your knee when you when you see that linebacker when you, you got that mcl sprain or that achilles tear you're not ready to here's the the dog on this card at plus 100 too right yeah you and you're not you you worried about dunking in basketball you know you got that acl tear or the achilles tear just ask kobe or kevin durant you know so so will you go into the fight and 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 be free, you know, and that's what we want to see from Jared Cannonier. I'm actually running with uh Cannonier on this one. I like I like uh comeback stories, and I and I think that this will be one for me to ride with the ride with the guy, uh the killer gorilla from Manila. Not well, not necessarily from Manila, but but definitely Jared Cannonier. I'm, I'm riding with this. One. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right there with you. I'm gonna go with the upset and killer gorilla, uh the betting dog on this one. This card offers uh, also offers uh, Dominic Reyes in a comeback fight. You know, Reyes has lost his last four. Uh, he's taking on uh, Dustin Jacoby, who's trying to enter the rankings at light heavyweight. Uh, you know, and hopefully I'd like to see Dominic Reyes finally get right. He hasn't won a fight since he fought uh, John Jones. He's had all sorts of health yeah. issues. He's had yeah. some uh, all types of things. I'd like to see him. Uh, you know, Raul Rojas Jr. is on this card as well. The, the, the scariest, the younger, the scariest young man alive. <laughs> uh, he's taking on the ever game. Ricky uh, Tarikos uh, is on this uh, in uh, Rojas Jr.'s uh, minus two thirty five. But I, I would sprinkle a, a little money on Ricky. Uh, I think Ricky could pull that upset. And uh, your favorite guy, uh, Brad Katona, is on this card. Uh, huge, uh, huge favorite at minus seven twenty-five though. On the yeah, free man, I'm, you know me, man. I'm, I'm really with the Brad Katona train. Uh, <laughs> you know, straight up and down serial killers. You know, when I think when I think of guys like Brad Katona, I, I, I it makes me, it takes me back to what I originally got caught up in. Uh, definitely watching UFC, the Cub Swatsons. Brad Katona. I, I, I'm trying to think. It's somebody else I'm picturing in my mind that really was on that too. But definitely Brad Katona, two-time, two-time, two-time Ultimate Fighter uh, champion. I, I And I don't think he gets his just due, um, but he's going up against a tough guy. Jesse Butler in his last fight lost. Both of them actually coming back from losses in this one. Um, and somehow, some way, let's see if Brad Katona's heart plays out in this one. And see and, and 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 puts him on on top, you know, and because these bantam weights are scary, folks. They don't do nothing but stand and bang and uh, pause. It, uh. Yeah, uh, and like I said, Katona is the heavy favorite at minus seven twenty five. So uh, I think he's probably the biggest favorite. Actually, he is the biggest favorite on the card uh, Thursday on Saturday night. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm 
I think Brad gets it done. Uh, there's actually a guy at the dispensary uh, I go to. Uh, he uh, looks like Brad Katona, so I fear for him. <laughs> um, but uh, but nonetheless, a good night fight. Uh, night uh, fight. F- you know, fights lined up Saturday. Headlined by Jared Cannonier. I'd like to hopefully see the Killer Gorilla get back on track. Uh, in this, you know, figure out this middleweight uh, division is getting a little murky here. Uh, as far as who could be next after uh, we get DDP and uh, Izzy, so oh uh, hey, another one just to keep just to keep our eyes out for the Julian Marquez and Zachary Reese fight uh, at middleweight. Um, I want to say Zachary Reese. I've I've got a chance to watch some stuff on him when he was in a smaller promotion. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good guy to watch if you want to see some uh, some some striking. Uh, so let's keep an eye on that. And of course, uh, Julian Marquez, once again, out here doing his thing. Um, very, really tough fight. I can't wait to see what the competition lies between the two of them. So uh, let's keep our eyes open for that one as well as it is on pretty much the bottom of the main card. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, it's been a, a, a great show. Another great episode of Hey Kicks and Haymakers. What you got going on the rest of the week before we get up out of here? All right. So everybody knows what's going on tomorrow is the beginning of the NBA Finals where the Boston Celtics will be facing the Dallas Mavericks later on this week, possibly on Sunday night or Monday because we have to see how the games go. I think the the next the second game, too, is on Sunday. Um, maybe on Monday night we'll be getting ready for the LTS in the Hoop Show Finals wraps where we're just going to do games one and two. And then other than that, man, I'll be ready to talk more fights on Wednesday. Let's see. After we see what Connor does, I'm sure with with, with by something will change by next Wednesday. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna be ready to get back in here Wednesday. And top it up with you, bro. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, next week we can maybe even do a little bit uh, uh our own power H and H power rankings. Uh, about that so we'll time. try to get in. Yeah, it's about that time to get into that as well because that was a topic of conversation. Islam said, "Give him that he feels like he's the number one." Dana said, "No, John Jones still is John still Jones. Jones. It's still John Jones to James." Yeah. So, uh, nonetheless, we'll, 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 maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that next it's week. It's crazy, man. Who knew that after all this time, half the year will be gone and we're still talking about John Jones. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like that fight's going to happen against Stipe in November, hopefully. So, hopefully so. Hopefully so. But, uh, Nonetheless, this has been another great episode of Head Kicks and Haymakers. I'll be back tomorrow night with the boys on the LTS show, 8 o'clock Central, 9 Eastern. Uh, we'll see you then. Uh, be a friend. Tell a friend, folks. Like, subscribe, share. I'm going to hit that outro. We'll see you then, folks. We'll Who got be back. The fans? Who's having the we'll chicken be- wings? We'll be back next week, 8 o'clock Central, for another episode of Head Kicks and Haymakers. See you then. Peace. <laughs>